Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to the .NET Core Web APIs. Uh, in these sessions or series, we are going to understand uh, how we can create the .NET Core Web APIs and then how to integrate those APIs with the UI application or any other client application. What are all benefits, advantages uh, we are having by using the .NET Core Web APIs? Why we choose the .NET Core Web APIs? How to communicate with the database by using these APIs. So all these topics we are going to learn in this series. So first of all, uh, if you see my screen here, uh, we have designed the syllabus for our .NET Core APIs. Okay. First of all, why we require the APIs? Because uh, if you want to communicate with the server or your database, then you will need one middleware, and that middleware is nothing but your .NET Core APIs. Okay. From the API, from the UI project you can call the web APIs in order to communicate with the server, okay? UI means front-end and front-end is a client side, okay? Client means it is rendering on the browser, this browser. So from the user's browser, if you want to get some data from the server, if you want to send, send some data to the server, then uh, server can connect with the database, server can have its own business logic. So all these things we will write in the dotnet core web api okay so basically uh, in order to uh, get the data set the data do the crude operation communicate with the server that all things we will write in the dotnet core api okay i uh, will create one diagram here quickly So you will come to know what is the role of actual web APIs, why we require that, okay? So this is different diagram. Let me create another one. Yeah, so let's say we are having multi tier application. Okay, so front end project can be different and back end project can be different. So, in that case, you can assume uh, we are having one client Android application. Okay, this is your one of the client. Uh, you can have more than one client, like I'm having one more client here. So, let's say iOS application. And we can have one more client, let's say web application. Okay, so these are our clients. Why I'm I'm calling them as a client? Because your end user who is going to use your application will actually install this client on their devices. So and if they are having Android device, they will install the Android application, same as for the iOS application, and then a web application can be accessed through the browser. We all know that, okay? So we don't have to install it, but your end user need to open the URL on their browser, so that way they can access our web application. Now the question is, the data for all these things application, who will manage, how we can get the data, okay? So data is available in through the database, we all know that, okay? So let's say we are having one, ABC management system and that management system we have developed hosted on one of the server and we also have the data. Data is very important part because without data we cannot identify user's identity, we cannot uh, do any operations right because that is very important thing. So for our application all the data let's say resides in this database and this database is hosted on one of the cloud. Okay we just Assume this. Like this. Okay. We're having one database which is hosted on one of the cloud, like AWS or Azure, like that. Now, if I install one Android application, let's say Facebook, and I wanted to log in. So, what I will do, I will enter my username, I will enter my password, 
and then click on the submit button or log it button so that username and password is stored inside this database which is available on the cloud right now i just wanted to verify whatever username and password entered by end user is valid or not who will do that how this android application will communicate with my database okay so in order to communicate your android application or any client application with your database or your system you will require one middleware okay and that middleware we will call as a web api process so this is your middleware okay middleware between your server let's say i have one server here this is my server okay and this is my database so in order to call my server application server or you can call it as a system okay in order to call to my server application and the database i require one middleware so that middleware is nothing but your api server so your ui project will give a call to the api project got it so this api project we are going to learn in this series okay we are not going to learn this ui part we are not going to learn anything else not android not ios not web we are just going to learn this api project okay so i hope you got the uh, like high level understanding of uh, what is web apis and why it is necessary uh, in 3 tier architecture or uh, in order to communicate with the server okay so from this api server we can definitely create communicate with our application server and from the application server we can communicate with the database okay so this will be the flow and database is available up on the cloud okay so api server apis and this server everything will be available on the cloud okay only these three applications will be installed on your client devices okay so the benefit of having the same api server for different different client application is if you create your account in android application let's say you have created one facebook account in your android mobile then you can access the same account on your laptop as well by using the chrome browser you don't have to re-register okay you will automatically get an access because because your android application ios application and server application are communicating with the same server which are having one centralized database okay so if i create an application by using the android application sorry uh, create an account by using the android application it will store your information into this database and if you want to access your account in web application it is also communicate with the same api same server same database that's why we are calling it as a centralized application okay where we will have the centralized database centralized server centralized apis which are serving the data to different different clients so client doesn't matter client can be anything client can be web can can be ios can be android only your server where all these clients are communicating should be the centralized so that way you can access your account on multiple devices okay multiple clients so this is just a high level understanding what is web api and why we require this api okay now let's go back to the syllabus so this will be our syllabus where we will discuss all these topics one by one okay so you can see first topic is introduction to the dotnet core so what is dotnet core dotnet core is uh, one of the lang one of the framework provided by microsoft okay previously we were having dotnet framework so dotnet framework was not open source dotnet framework framework was not platform independent okay we can only install the dotnet framework application on the windows operating system so that was the problem now by using the dotnet core you can create platform independent application you can install your dotnet core api uh, applications on any operating system like mac ios or your windows machine okay or linux ubuntu so
So this is the beauty of the .NET code. How we can install it? So there is the latest version of the .NET Core is .NET Core 8. .NET Core 8. Okay. So this is your .NET Core latest version. So if someone asks you which which .NET version you are currently using, you can tell them I am currently using .NET 7 because 8 is recently released. So we cannot have the projects in the 8 directly, right? So you can just be, uh, tell them I am currently using .NET 7. .NET 8 is, 8 is released on the 14th November, means 15 days back, let's say, 10 days back, okay? So you can just ask them, tell them, I am currently working with .NET 6 or 7, because .NET 8 is currently recently introduced, okay? So these are all .NET versions available. If you click here, this is .NET 8, then .NET 7 is, was the last one and we can create the projects into it. Okay. So this is the .NET 8. You can directly download it. How to download it? You can go here, SDK, click on the Windows and then 64. So it will download the 64 version of the .NET Core, uh, base 64 version. So you can install it on your laptop. If you are still using base 32, you can use 86. Okay, let's close it. So in order to work with the .NET Core, you can use CLI commands. Why we require the CLI commands? Because if you want to create a new project, if you want to uh, run some add new package, if you want to remove the packages, so anything you want to do with your project, you can do by using the CLI, command line interface. But if you are having Visual Studio, then you don't have to use any CLI command because Visual Studio is having all the commands and it will provide you an interface in order to run those commands. So you don't have to memorize those commands. Okay. .NET Core is an open source, but Visual, Stu Visual Studio is a paid version. For students, you can just download the Visual Studio as a community edition. So that way you can use it freely. Okay. So We'll also go through some commands if you don't want to work with the Visual Studio, but we can skip the topic, skip the uh, this topic if you are going to use Visual Studio. And mostly 99% people who are working with the .NET Core will use Visual Studio ID. Okay, so don't worry about that. Next is C# -sharp concept. Uh, we already discussed all the topics about the C# -sharp in another series, so you can just visit them. And uh, this C sharp, uh, we, do, we are not going to cover in this series, okay, or this session because I'm just assuming all the C sharp related videos you already watch uh, from the another series, okay. Now let's discuss about the introduction part. We just discussed, right? What is .NET Core and why we require this one, okay? Next one is how to create .NET Core web application. This is your first topic. So let me just stop the recording. If you have any questions, we can discuss.